Alrighty, so we're up here at the Atlas lathe. Um, so my machine shop is pretty limited, so I gotta, I kind of gotta get creative with how I machine things. Um, so right now I'm using the Atlas lathe with uh, the milling machine attachments to mill the two faces of the engine cylinder. Um, that's gonna be our first machining operation on this thing. I've done a little bit over here. You can kind of see that. Um, it turned out pretty well. I'm hoping that there's no there's no big uh, pores in here or no big um, you know there's no porosity. But we'll, we'll see. Um, so I'm gonna go through this. I'll show you a little bit of cutting but I'm gonna be here a while because all I got to work with is a half inch end mill. So uh, let's get started. Okay so this surface is kind of curved this way. Um, it would be best if I could start over here and feed that way. However, then I would be climb milling. And I don't want to climb mill on this machine. It's just not rigid enough. So I just touched off here, moved it back over here. And now I'm going to feed in uh, from back here and move forward. So let's see here. We're going to set up my little indicator, mag back indicator. Alright, so we're going to do a 50 thousandths cut. Okay, so that the milling machine set up on the lathe didn't work, uh, or the milling attachment set up. My milling machine is too small, so <clears throat> I improvised. I used the drill press. I know you're not supposed to mill on the drill press, but I don't have any other choice. Uh, I had this boring bar. I cut it in half. Uh, and made myself a little fly cutter and it seems to be doing okay for now um, so I'm gonna machine this down to where it's flush with this edge on this lip right here and um, and then I'm just going to uh, stop there I'll probably still have something you know some cavity right here I might come in later and fill that in but it's really not necessary because there's a, a part's gonna just bolt to this right here and completely cover this all I need is just two bolt holes um, and then I should be good to go so as long as it's flat I'm fine um, you know we'll see what it looks like when it's done so let's start this up see that smooth um, I just have to go until this is flush I'm almost there uh, we'll see what it looks like if it's if it turns out that it's not perfectly flat over here I might add in some milliput and then do one final face to make it just smooth and flat but uh, I'll bring you guys back I'll do that off camera Wow, that took a really long time. Turns out you can mill cast iron in the drill press, but it just takes forever. So, uh, now that we have both sides machined, uh, we're going to work on getting the sand out of this bore uh, a little bit better. Alrighty, so what I, what I did was I bought one of these drum grinder things and I just welded it to a, a steel rod. Um, and then uh, I squeezed it in the vise so it's straight, so there's no run out. Now we're just going to get in there and try to get all the sand out. So now that uh, the bore is cleaned out as much as I can, and these two sides are machined, uh, we need to chuck this up and face off the ends and then bore it out. So these are now our datums uh, or a frame of reference these machine surfaces. So what's important is that the bore and the faces are all perpendicular to each other right so um, what I did was first I made the part vertical like this skated it indic an indicator back and forth on this uh, surface right here and indicated that in and now it's in there straight because it's hard to 
put it in there straight because it's just a rough casting. Um, so what's important is that it's straight with respect to this surface. All right, so here's our drawing here of the part and all the dimensions. Um, so for this operation, we're going to look at this guy down here. So we want, it's going to be a two inch bore for the piston. Um, and then we're going to have a bolt circle uh, with a radius of 3.25. So we'll do that after we machine it. Another thing we got to look at is up here, this thickness of this lip is half an inch. Um, when I made the pattern, I made these roughly three quarters of an inch. Take an eighth off, uh, take an eighth of material off. I like to choose an eighth for casting uh, because you know you can get things uh, casting imperfections like this that go pretty deep. Uh, but taking off an eighth, most of that will go away. We'll probably still have a little bit left, but it should be fine. So we're gonna take some light cuts here because I don't want the part moving. It's already indicated in. Um, so let's see here. Okay, so here's the game plan. We are first going to face this off, uh, and then we're going to make the bolt pattern. Uh, my lathe has an uh, indexer on the bull gear, so we can accurately make uh, the eight bolt hole pattern. Then we're gonna, I'm going to take it out, flip it over, you know, put it against the back of the chuck, so it's still you know centered with the world uh, and then we're going to face the other side do the bolts again and then bore it and uh, the reason for that is you know we want we want the bore to be uh, normal to these surfaces we want the surface and the bore to be perpendicular uh, otherwise it'll cause binding when you know everything's all said and done so Let's get started. All right, so let's just take some light cuts here. So when you first start out with casting, you got to be really careful. As I might have said before, because the surface is so uneven. That first layer of scale there. We still got a while. Alright, go. uh, so this guy completely killed my carbide insert. I had to flip it over and use the other side. Um, I tried to use high speed steel, but man, it just killed it immediately. So we still have about 200 thousands left to go on this guy. Um, I'm hoping I'm through all the super hard skin and I can actually cut this without messing up my the other side of my inserts. Getting just a little bit of shatter. I'm going to slow it down. Ah, the chips are hot. Alright, it looks like that solved the chatter issue. Let's see how that looks. 
Oh yeah, that's way better. Looks like we're getting pretty close here. You see, we got about a hundred thousandths, and then this side should be done. I'm again, I'm very happy. There's no porosity. Uh, I'm gonna finish this up and bring you guys back on the last pass. Okay, we got it down pretty much to it. I'm just gonna do a finish pass. Get the feet in just a little bit. I uh, spread it up as well. I think that will be okay. I'm going to lap all of the uh, surfaces that need the seal. Let's just break this edge. There we go. Alright, that side's done. If you look, um, the chatter the finish changes when it, uh, so we have this big lip here that hangs over and then from here to here uh, it's essentially just solid material and I think what's happening is that, you know, we're going from this lip to solid material and it's resonating uh, in the solid material. Uh, but again, it's flat enough, we're going to lap it, so um, let's move on. Okay, so I changed my mind with the order of operations here. Um, what I'm going to do, originally I said that I wanted to uh, face this off and then do the bolt pattern and then flip it around. However, the problem with that is there's no good reference to uh, measure where the bolt circle is going to be. This is a rough casting edge and so is this. So uh, if I go on, if I use this one, the other one's going to be off by, you know, 10, 20 thousandths just because it's a casting. So what, I, what I'm going to do is uh, flip this round, then bore it out, and then use the, use the bore as the, the uh, data. Right? So uh, I would touch off on the bore and then just measure out from the bore. And that's going to be the same on both sides. And I can indicate that in. So I'm going to do that instead. It's a more accurate way of putting down the bolt pattern. I'm going to take this out. We're going to flip it around. Make sure everything is clean so it makes it nice and flat. The bottom in first. Let's just make sure that that's flat. How flat is that? Okay, uh, I managed to line it up, I just played with it. Uh, until it's pretty cl pretty close to make sure it's straight uh, and I really nailed getting it straight last time there's a little bit of run out on the bore could have been because the core was a little crooked during the pour but this time I mean that's pretty damn good <laughs> so I'm very happy with the way this is situated uh, next step we're gonna face this off and then bore it out